Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you please something about how the Prophet Sallallahu lived and fought with the ego before Jibrail Aleyhisselam came to Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam declaring his prophethood? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he did not have an ego. The same way that we are having an ego. The Holy Prophet والسلام, when he was a child and everybody knows whether you're a believer or unbeliever, Muslim or non-Muslim, if you're a child before you reach to the age of maturity you are innocent. You're a masoom, you're innocent. And if that child dies before the age of maturity he goes straight to paradise. He is at that level of what? Of saints. And when the Holy Prophet والسلام, was a child, at that time he was living in the desert because it was a tradition of the Arabs to send their, especially those ones who are noble born, to send their children to the desert, to be raised in the desert, to learn the desert ways, and to be living there, to be trained there because there was a wet nurse for the Holy Prophet also. And so, the Prophet was in the desert and one day his uh, milk brothers, you know milk brothers? Uh, meaning that uh, it is not related to you by blood, but that person is related to you by milk because it's sharing the same milk from your mother or from one woman, milk brother. They come running uh, to their milk mother to say, Mother, they took him. And says, who took him? Two men, they came and they took him. They got in a panic, they went around looking for him. Later they found him. Holy Prophet related that incident, saying, when I was that age, the angels, they came and they perform a surgery on me and they cut open my heart and they clean my heart Holy Prophet wasalam, is Habibullah every child of Adam when he is born he is touched by shaitan that is why the child cries when he is born the baby cries because shaitan touches except for two Holy Prophet is saying, of course the prophets are different, but he's speaking specifically about Isa alayhi salam. And he says about himself. So the shaitans, uh, they cannot come near to the Holy Prophet Whether he was a child or teenager or grown up, you're not talking about a normal human being here. You're talking about That one that when he was born, right after, he was able to speak perfectly. That one that when he was born, great light was coming from the paradises and coming from the, his mother's uh, house, the father's house, that the angels were circling around, that every living creature in the face of this world and in the universe they are welcoming him, knowing that the prophet of the last days they have been born. That he was aware of himself when he was born. Otherwise, if he is not aware of his own prophethood, why is he going to say, La ilaha illallah, inni rasulullah, I am rasulullah. Ummati, ummati. Not only he recognized Allah and he recognized his own prophethood, he recognizes ummat that he sent for. Prophet ﷺ was not sent here for his family or for his friends. He was sent here for his ummah to become an intercessor, to become the one who brings mercy to the entire ummah, entire mankind until judgment day. We're talking about the one when he was a baby and his wet nurse was looking at him, he was laughing. It was a full moon one night and he saw the baby laughing and he looked and the baby was doing this and she looked at the baby laughing and the baby was looking out 
through the window. And the bin, whenever the baby was doing this, it was a full moon that night. The moon was moving up and down. He was commanding it. That later, the same moon, he split. That later, when they offered him everything that they could offer him, the most richest, the most well-connected women, they, when they offered him uh, kingship, when they offered to say, we will follow you one day, follow you, next day we follow our old ways, next day we follow you, saying that we have a compromise, he said, even if you were to give the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I will not forsake the way of Allah. And the Sahabi Kiram, they saw the sun in his right hand and the moon in his left. So we're talking about Rasulullah It's very unusual. The one who has no shadow, the one, whenever he walks, a cloud hovers over him to cool him. The one that wild animals, they spoke to him in perfect Arabic, declaring his prophethood. The one that rocks in the hands of his enemy, Abu Jahil. When Abu Jahil came to him holding in his hands, putting it in his back and saying, if you are a prophet, tell me what is in my hands. And prophet just smiled, <laughs> shook his head and says, yeah, Abu Jahil. Why don't you turn around and open your palms and say, and listen to what those stones that you have collected is saying to you. And when Abu Jahil opened his hands, the stones were saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And he dropped it and he says, you are a magician. As the one that the trees, they uprooted themselves. They pulled their roots from the ground and they crawled to him to kiss his hand and they crawled back. So many unusual things. So now don't look at ego, how the Prophet had and how we have. Because that one is the beloved of Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, before I created anything, I created the light of my beloved one. Don't look at that one because he was born 1300 years ago that he is a man that is a man like us. That one is the most ancient. That one is the first one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created. That one is the reason why Allah created everything else in existence. That he says in his Hadith Qudsi, Lawlaka, Lawlaka. If it were not for you, if it were not for you, Ya Muhammad, I would not have created the universes. So yesterday, somebody asked a question of anthropomorphism. Huh? If saying that Allah has a face, hands, he sits, he stands, he gets angry, is this anthropomorphic? They say, no, this is not anthropomorphic. Because in Islam, we never make Allah to look like a man. In Islam, we never reduce Allah to say that Allah is like a man. All other religions, they do that. That's why in Islam we say Allah, Allah, who Akbar. Allah is the greatest and is greater than that. Walam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. That Allah has all these qualities that we are familiar with so that we know something of Him, but He is removed from everything. He is removed even from something that we think we are familiar with. He is far removed from that. And this Ratul Ikhlas saying, Allah is one. Say, Kul hu Allahu ahad. Allah samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakullahu kufwan ahad. And there is nothing that is like him, that is close to him. That even if you think you know something, he is beyond that. He escapes you. So now we cannot contain. We are not making Allah to be an idol. We cannot contain. Never is going to be. Because always you think he's beyond that.
So don't make your holy prophet والسلام, in your own image. To think just because you are like this, that he is also like this. He didn't come from us, we came from him. Allah is the creator of everything. And we're saying shukur alhamdulillah that we're following a real inheritor of the Prophet Shaykh Abdul Karim Al Tabrisi Arabani, Shaykh Effendi Sahibul Saif, that he pulled us out from our own ignorance and he gives us so much understanding and knowledge and he's given us a taste of the honor of servanthood and he has opened our hearts to understand a little bit more about ourselves and a little bit more about our Lord. May Allah raise his station higher and higher. May he never stop sending his support to us. May Allah forgive me and bless you. And Fatiha.